So we've mostly been talking about monosyllabic words so far, and as we indicated, monosyllabic words can have a variety of shapes. But there are multisyllabic words, which have more than one syllable. For example, you could have a CVCV word, such as ready. Note that because there are two vowel units, and they're not immediately next to each other, by definition this word would have to have more than one syllable. Similarly, if a word had a vowel-consonant-vowel structure, such as abby, this would be multisyllabic as well, by definition. As with single-syllable words, multisyllabic words can have many different structures, some of which can be quite complex. Counting syllables in a word is pretty much the same thing as counting the vowels in the word, but remember that we have to count the vowel sounds and not the vowel letters to do this accurately. And you also have to remember that diphthongs are always counted as one vowel. Where we have more than one syllable, there will also be boundaries between syllables. As we've defined syllables based on the presence of a vowel-like unit, we can be safe in thinking that each vowel in a word typically will be in its own syllable. So this is where to start. Make sure that each vowel is in its own syllable. Consonants can be a bit trickier. Word initial consonants are not so tough. They're onsets. There's no other choice. Word final consonants are easy too. They're codas. There's no other choice. But what about word medial consonants? If a consonant occurs between two vowels, then technically it could be either the coda to the earlier syllable or the onset to the next syllable. What should you do in this case? The principle to adhere to is one that says maximize onsets. The way I like to think about this is that consonants want to be onsets. They don't like being codas, and they'll only act as codas if they have no other choice. When a consonant is given the choice to be a coda of one syllable or an onset to a different syllable, it'll choose to be an onset every time. So, if you have a CVCV word, such as ready, it will always syllabify such that the d sound is the onset of the second syllable, like this. Maximizing onsets makes syllabifying words with just one medial consonant easy. But what if you have two medial consonants next to each other? A word like this has three different ways in which you could divide the syllables. If you stick with the principle of maximizing onsets, then you'd want to choose option one here making both medial consonants part of the onset to the second syllable, and leaving the first syllable with no coda consonant at all. And this can work quite well, as long as the consonant cluster that's created at the beginning of the second syllable is allowed. For example, if the word is restate, then the medial consonant cluster would be st, and st is a perfectly fine initial consonant cluster in English. How do we know? because there are real words in English that start with this consonant cluster, such as stop, stick, stew, and many others. The situation is quite a bit different for a word like lecture. Here we have two medial consonants, k and ch, but there aren't any words in English that start with kch. This means that kch is not an allowable initial consonant cluster in English. So if maximizing the onset of a syllable results in creating an illegal consonant cluster, then you can't syllabify your word that way. In this case, the k sound must remain as the coda to the first syllable, and ch stands alone as the onset to the second syllable. The correct syllabification of this word has the boundary between k and ch, like this. The same principles will apply to syllabifying words that have even more complex medial consonant situations. The rule of thumb is to divide syllables so that as many consonants as possible act as onsets. The things that get in the way of this are 1. The ends of words, where there is no upcoming syllable that a consonant could be an onset for, and 2. A set of medial consonants that would create an illegal consonant cluster. And remember that you can test whether a consonant cluster is legal by seeing if there are any words that start with that consonant cluster.